Well, what can you say about that? The ninth win in a row for Max Verstappen. Another Red Bull 1-2 after completing that feat last time out in Bahrain in our season opener. And do you know what? A dream debut for a teenager from Essex in a Ferrari. The youngest to ever step into one and scoring points as well. Let's get into all the action then from the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix here in your post-race show from the paddock. And welcome to your post-race show and look at the scenes on the grid as well. Just after the podium, Max Verstappen, Sergio Perez and Charles Leclerc standing atop. Charles Leclerc with his first podium of the season. Oh, it looks pretty good fun out there, doesn't it, Jack Doom? But we're having plenty of fun in here now that the firework display has stopped because that was pretty much deafening, wasn't it? Jack, thank you for being on the show. Alpine reserve driver, how are you doing and how did you see that race? Yeah, it was... Um difficult race I think because you didn't it, drop doing okay there I like set you right up you for that. set me right up yeah, I did. exactly I didn't want to <laughs> I didn't want to come in straight away but thank you very much You're for welcome. clarifying that um yeah it was a difficult race not because the strategy was wide open because it was closed you know that, that early pit stop meant everyone went into the one stop very early no one was really trying to extend it was an easy stop uh proved difficult for the people who had tried to extend hopefully that was I think you had Lewis, Norris, Joe and, and Hulkenberg who were trying to extend, maybe hoping for a late safety car that never really came, yeah. potentially put them a little bit out of position. Um, but yeah, it was super difficult to really try and make any inroads. Yeah, it was, wasn't it? And you could see the frustration for some drivers like Alex Albon stuck behind that Kevin Magnussen train at one point, Yuki Tsunoda slipping back in the standings as well. But right at the front, the dominance from Max Verstappen, just unbelievable, wasn't it? Metronomic in the display. That he just that he put on tonight and and perfect as well but he made it look so routine so easy i'm sure it's far from on a track like this jack far from yeah i was only thinking i think two laps to go where they finally panned the max for the first time in maybe 30 <laughs> laps and i was thinking what it must be like for him re you know i would re-watch my races after and have a look and you could see something but there's not really much to re-watch from him because he's just out there lap after lap at some time setting laps a second faster than anyone else in the field and it's just clinical what he's doing, lap after lap, you know, it's just perfection, like you said, and it's uh, it's cool to watch. Maybe not so exciting at the moment, but, you know, it just shows how well he's perform performing, and especially when you have Checo, an extremely talented driver in a car next to him, that he's putting, you know, lap after lap, like I said, up to close to one seconds over. That was an assured drive from Checo, we'll come on to that, but a, a great P2 to back up the Red Bull performance today. We'll come to Alpine and in the opening laps, the formation lap, we heard an issue for Pierre Gasly, suspected gearbox. What more can you tell us, Jack? Yeah, really, you know, that is it. Uh, gearbox issue, unfortunately, on the out lap. Um, we couldn't go to sixth gear. It's very limited. Luckily to get away from the line and at least bring the car back to the pit lane. Um, you know, it is unfortunate, but uh, Pierre, the team, we're all still motivated, um, you know, and he's just looking forward to Melbourne and getting more laps in the car and, and trying to improve and go forward. How difficult is it at the moment for Alpine to keep their heads up with obviously Q1 exits for both drivers now on back-to-back -back weekends? And I know the fight is on, but I guess it's a limited fight with the car that we're currently running for Alpine. Yeah, you know, it, it's it's difficult for sure. Um, not unexpected, though. So it's not like we had high hopes and, oh, my, oh my God, what is going on? Um, we know what we chose to do and we, what we set out to do. And I think P13 today, it's definitely not where we want to be, but, you know, it is a, it is a step forward and, and not too bad of a result. So... I think we're just keeping our heads high. Hello, welcome. Sure. Welcome to Alex Albert. Was I supposed to jump in? I love that you did. I was can in I the stand? middle yeah. of, a, hey, of Jack my was in full flow, but you can join us <laughs> anytime. No, worries. Worries. no I love it's it. Hello, minutes. how are you doing, Alex? Uh, okay. P11. Yes. A very frustrating position to be in, I know. Just talk sure. us through your race, indeed, the sort of train that we saw behind Kevin Magnus and how difficult it was to try and get away from that. Uh, it was a, a great race from her. So I have to say, strategy wise, they played it perfectly. Um, I told Nico he better give Kevin 50% of his prize money, bonus money for, for P10 because uh, he definitely played the team game there. And um, it was frustrating. I mean, that it's weird. The, the has has turned into a bit of a Williams. It's a bit of a rocket ship down the straights. And, and we were one of the slowest in the speed trap, so it made it quite hard for us to overtake. So very un-Williams-like for us this weekend. But 
Um, frustrating because we had great pace. Um, finally, when we got through, we were able to show it, but um, no one likes P11. No, you know? they don't. Talk us through the moment with Kevin Magnussen as well. Obviously, he got the 10 second penalty, and we'll come on to those penalties shortly in the studio. You can see it here, Alex. Talk us through uh, from your cockpit. Uh, yeah. it's a, honestly, it's a racing incident for me. I really don't like this corner. I don't know if you know that, Jack, but I don't know why we've designed the corner that kind of sticks out. Yeah, the last before, moment the sort of pivots last, that you can't really use. I think use. Um, some of these tracks recently, they like this kind of like awkward angle. They normally do it on pit exit, on corner exits, where you have to kind of like turn away from the corner to miss a, uh, a wall. Um, Baku comes to mind or... Or even here, um, how we sort of turn 10 kinks back on itself. Exactly. There's not a wall, but we've created exactly, that kink. Exactly, yeah. the and they, they love these little awkward kinks. And it just means it's very awkward for the, for the car on the inside to judge the space because you, you leave a good space the whole way down the straight and then in the last minute you've got this kink that comes out you and, and you get the driver on the right gets squeezed the guy on the left doesn't judge it as well and um, I'm not obviously yeah whatever doesn't really change too much I had a bit of front wing damage um, so we were missing a bit of flat um, otherwise yeah the overtake on Snowda, we've got that to run as well for you to have a look at. Talk us through that one. I honestly don't even remember it. Uh, you don't remember it? <laughs> no. It was a good one. It was a good was one. Here good. we go. Super um, late on the brakes. Got it done. Again, not very Williams-like. Um, <laughs> we've been good on the brakes this year. Um, it's, it's, it's been the area we've been focused on the most. And actually, when I overtook him and, and we were side by side into turn four, that's, I know, that's when I, I got the appreciation for Kevin's problem because I was like, oh, hang on a minute. You did give I, him I a better, lot of space. I better though. not give him. <laughs> I was like, if I do the same mistake Kevin did to me, I look like an idiot. So I'll give him a little bit more space. Um, yeah, it, it was a, it was an okay race. I think what hurts us is more obviously Nico scored a point, um, which is not great for the championship. We know how hard it is to score points in the midfield. Um, when Lance had his DNF, everyone in that backfield team lick their lips. It's the time to score some points. And uh, this time it was Nico. Hopefully next time it's us. We'll see. Australia then, let's look ahead. Yeah. How do you feel this Williams will suit that track? You had a great opportunity we there did. last year. We were, very, we were very good last year. We were, we were, I think, running P6 or P7 until I uh, went a bit adventurous. Sorry to bring it up. Sorry. <laughs> no, that's fine. That's fine. Um, I like that track. It suits me as well. Just I like them high speed tracks. And um, let's see. Realistically, we need to drop some downforce. I don't think I think our car is a little bit draggy right now, so um, we need to see you know rear wing options, what we've got in the car, and uh, come with the car a little bit more raceable than, than this weekend. I think this weekend we we had a we, w we went for the optimal car, which is was a little bit draggy this weekend, and we kind of paid the pr paid the price a bit. We uh, we realised straight away in the race how difficult it was to to get to, to battle and to fight. So um, maybe go a, a step towards the old the old Williams car and, and a bit uh, more fast down the straights. We'll see, I think we're about to be mown down by um, Max Verstappen as a million photographers crash into our studio. Max also crashing in. That is the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix. Yeah, we're going to get Max everybody. in the thing. Yeah, in we should have judged him in the show, shouldn't we? <laughs> Could have, yeah. Thought he was V-lining it for it, actually. Was <laughs> yeah, good enough. Over can I take a water? Of course you can, absolutely. That's what they're there for. That's for you. It's a lot of water, isn't it? Take the whole, there's the whole thing. Oh, are, we, are you done? Are we out? I, I imagine I was. Yes, See sure. you later. <laughs> <laughs> Alex, thank you so much. Well done. I know P11 is not the result anyone wanted. Um, well, goodness me. Uh, he's gone. <laughs> yeah, he's gone. Come back in. Saudi Arabia then, we see the paddock here behind us, absolutely chock-a-block, and that firework display, we came on air about 30 seconds too late, didn't we? Because while it was deafening and you wouldn't have heard us speak and we couldn't really hear each other, it was pretty spectacular, wasn't it? And the pre-race grid as well, the show on there was something else. Yeah, you know, they definitely win the fireworks competition. <laughs> um, they've, they've taken P1 there for the year. You know, we, we never know, but they definitely go above and beyond here. Um, and uh, yeah, you know, I really enjoy the paddock here, the atmosphere, it's not too wide, so when it is filling in, cut off again. <laughs> Nico, hello. Nice Thank you so much. You as well. Pretty dry too. No, not it's not breaking sweat. It's a helmet. It's a mushroom. Mushroom helmet. Me? Yeah. Yeah? Thank you. <laughs> Always so. Maybe you swap Throwing hairdressing tips compliments. at the end. Exactly. Nico, congratulations. Thank a you. point for Haas. Brilliant teamwork as well. Talk us through that race and how hard fought that was. Um, for me, I was just pushing. I think it was more hard afford from Kevin. Uh, I was told, I didn't see it, but I was told that he was uh, really sticking out his neck for me and for the team, you know, making uh, or holding everybody up, um, which obviously 
allowed me to to open up a gap and, and make a pit stop window uh, on everybody else, which, yeah, obviously comes in uh, quite handy and you know paid off at the end. We managed to get that point, which is uh, pretty valuable these days. It definitely is. How much does that point mean to Haas? We just heard from Alex there saying with the DNF to Lance, that one point was up for grabs and it's oh so important yeah. in the midfield, isn't it? Yeah, it is. So we have the, the top five teams and, you know, if nobody drops out, it's the, the top ten are taken and there's no points in it. So, uh, you know, that makes it pretty, pretty tricky for us. And when we have, you know, opportunities like today, um, yeah, we have to really be there and then and, and take them. So I feel happy, you know, and just good that we managed to do that. Car also felt pretty good, um, especially that medium stint after the safety car. The car came alive. I, I was able to find a really good rhythm and that was pretty enjoyable. Have you spoken to Kevin at all yet? What was his take? Yeah, the race? after the race, uh, quickly. Um, yeah, thanked him already. Uh, I'll return the favor for sure later uh, in the year. Just sometime. half of the bonus. Just stay. Mm, not Maybe sure about that. that. <laughs> if apart, I return the favor, then we can. Apart from then, you're, then you're even. Being P10, one point. Bit of a lonely race. It yeah. just seems like that split. You know, those 30 seconds for the car yeah. ahead. It, it is a. You know, a huge duration apart from Kevin doing yeah. say some good work and whatnot, and you're having that pit stop. But what was that really like? Just being in there, you know, difficult obviously to stay potentially in the zone. You know, I know it's it is easy when you're there clocking laps around here, but very easy to make a, a small mistake around a track like this when you're just by yourself for, for that long. Yeah, but I tell you, man, this track is so intense, and you just you just there the whole time because it just you know it, it really. Um, yeah, forces you to be there, to be present, because uh, you, you can't, uh, yeah, allow to snooze here for one moment. This track is intense. Probably maybe, you know, the most intense we have on, on the calendar because the speeds are just so high and, uh, yeah, a mistake would also be painful here. So, you know, for sure. you, don't, you don't want that. Don't want that. No. Nico, we have to let you go, but thank you so thank much you for coming on the show. Congratulations, a point you. for Haas and so well for from both drivers. Uh, Jack, can you sum up how important those points are? I'm actually going to stop you there because you're about to be gate crashed by another driver. We're bringing in now Oscar Piastri joins us. Hello. P4, Oscar. How about that? Uh, yeah, it was it was okay. Um, I don't think we could have done too much more. It was a frustrating 20 laps stuck behind Lewis, but um, yeah, I think in the end that was the, the most we could have done. Didn't quite have the pace of the cars ahead, but um, all in all, pretty happy with that. Talk us through that then, and the seemingly uh, sort of disadvantage that McLaren's had in straight line speed, even with DRS effect, it looks so difficult. Yeah, I think we, we just didn't quite have enough speed. Um, I think we also struggled in the last corner, so you put two long straights in that corner in the middle. It's not a very fun time for us, as, as we saw. So um, definitely some things to try and work on for us. Um, but yeah, I think that was not a bad night. Bad night's work. Do you think P4 is about the maximum you could have achieved today without any further safety cars or yellow flags and so on? Yeah, definitely. I think I, I had a chance to try and get past Charles, but just didn't quite have enough unfortunately so um i think p4 is the most we could have done but uh yeah we'll keep pushing for more Jack? looking forward from jet obviously it's completely different track from bahrain now heading to melbourne home race as well how do you think the car is going to perform somewhere which was obviously better it seemed like overall slightly not enough to obviously challenge ferrari and red bull but how is it looking going into melbourne just roughly at this point in time um i, I think you know, we probably favoured ourselves here as being a, a very good track for us. Melbourne is a bit more low speed content, which is not not the best for us <laughs> at the moment. So, um, yeah, we'll, we'll see. I think we seem very, very close with Mercedes um, and Ferrari and Red Bull seem a step ahead. So, um, yeah, we'll see what we can do. When are you going to Australia? 4 a.m. Tonight? Tonight. Wow, you got a holiday coming up, do you? Yeah, one week at home. So what good. about you? Very when nice. do you I go, go to uh, next weekend. Next weekend. So, uh, so yeah, How much nice. are you looking forward to getting back home? Yeah, it'll be nice. It'll be really nice. I I kind of joke that I became an F1 driver to give myself an extra week at home every year. So um, yeah, it's nice to <laughs> probably an extra two, no? An extra two, yeah. So um, it's yeah, they, they did the calendar nicely for us this year. So um, yeah, it's always nice to, to go back home and um, yeah, ten minutes from where I grew up. It's it's pretty special. So I'm looking forward to going back there. What happens between now then and when you do fly to Australia? What does this week look like? Um, go back to the factory, um, say thank you to the team, thank you to the people who built my right rear corner yesterday because um, it's very strong, it turns out. Um, and yeah, a bit of simulator work preparing uh, Melbourne and Japan because, um, yeah, obviously it, it probably makes sense to, to stay in 
that part of the world uh, for those two races. So a bit of sim work and a um, bit of time to chill out because it's been a, a busy few weeks. We heard from Nico there, he was fighting for that final point, just how intense this track is, the concentration level. There's absolutely no let up. How was it physically for you in the car? Um, yeah, definitely a, a tough race. Um, I think Qatar definitely sensed the benchmark for, <laughs> yeah. for tough races, but um, it's it's tough around here. Um, you know, you got to concentrate all the time. Even for me in the last sort of 15 laps, um, you know, I didn't really have any cars around, but just keeping your concentration uh, is is not that that straightforward around here. So um, it's definitely one of the toughest of the year with all the high speed corners and the walls, but. Um, I am glad to say not the toughest race of my career. Oscar, thank you very much indeed for your time. You. Congratulations, Cheers. P4. Brilliant points from McLaren and Lando in there as well. Thank you very much. Thank you. Safe travels to Australia. We'll see you there. Thank you. Maybe one more time. <laughs> thank you, Jack. <laughs> um, good stuff. Thank you, Jack. Um, hold that thought. We are now going to hear from Lando Norris in the media pen with Mike Seymour. Okay. So, Lando, you and Lewis went very long into the race on a uh, different strategy there. So how do you reflect on that and, and how the race as a whole panned out for you? Yeah, uh, I mean, we took a little bit of a gamble to try to go along on the mediums and hope there was a safety car or something, but uh, but it never came. So we gave it a good shot. Um, we could have just boxed in the beginning with everyone else, but I thought we'd try something a little bit different and uh, could have worked. It didn't, but uh, that's how it is sometimes. So um, I'm happy. I think the performance of the car was good. In the end, yes, I think we missed out on a couple of points from my side, but um, we did what we could with the strategy that we chose to do, so I'm happy with that. And the weekend as a whole, how are you feeling about McLaren's pace relative to your rivals so far this year? It's the same. Same as Aston, same as uh, Mercedes, uh, Red Bull and Ferrari quite a long way ahead. That's it. Thanks, Lando. Yeah, P8 for Lando Norris and P4 for his teammate Oscar Piastri and Lando just unable to get to terms with P7 Oli Behrman, the teenager in for Ferrari. But there was sort of drama from the start for Lando Norris, or so it seemed to us. Anyway, Sam Collins, Alex Brundle are in the studio to talk through a race a bit full of penalties. Yeah, it very much was. Lando Norris, uh, well... It, uh, I think he got away with it a bit, to be honest, at the start of this race, because uh, we were surmising in commentary so much about whether this was a jump start or not for Lando Norris. Two regulations here, Sam. Cars have to be, firstly, within the box of the start, and secondly, immobile, while the lights are red, don't they? That's right. There's, there's actually there's a bunch of regulations going on. So Article 48.1a, I think it is, you're not allowed to be moving when the lights go out. Alex, I, 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 I'm pretty sure he was moving when the lights went out. You also have to be in the correct starting position when the lights go out. You can see Oscar Piastri on the right-hand side of the screen there, clearly, or might on your left-hand side of the screen, you can see he is inside that white line box. Well, we've gone and had a look at this, and we think that Lando Norris was also inside the white box. So he gets away with that bit of the regulation, but the regulation here, Alex, is so clear. Yeah, it's Article 48A. It's dealt with, with the timing loop, which is in the track, and also the transponders in the car. I cannot believe he's got away with that one, to be honest. Nothing against Lando. He gave us a great race after that. But it was the beginning of a string of kind of interesting calls throughout well, the race, it wasn't was. it? It, it certainly was, Alex. But I think that on the Lando one, I think the reasoning, the only rationale that I can come up with why the FIA didn't issue a penalty for that. I had to wind back all the way back to the 2019 season and look at a similar situation with Sebastian Vettel at the start of the Japanese Grand Prix where the FIA didn't issue a penalty. I think it's because he stopped the car fully but got back going. That's not what the regulations say, but I think that's how they've been applied in this case. So then a string of two penalties for Kevin Magnussen. Let's go for the uh, the Albon squeeze first. Um, we've already heard from uh, Alex Albon on the uh, on the uh, on the show, but for me that was a 10 second penalty for Kevin Magnussen. Now I get it. It's a uh, Albon. We've already heard thinks it's a racing incident. For me, not a 10 second penalty there for Kevin Magnussen. What do you think? Well. I thought at first, yeah, look, it's a clear penalty. It's avoidable contact. You should get a penalty for that. That's the rules. I went back and checked all the avoidable contact penalties for the last three, couple of seasons. Every time it was a five-second penalty. So why was it 10? 
we've yet to find out. For me, remarkably close to a racing instant. Stewards have more angles and information than us. Kevin Magnussen again with another 10 second penalty. Again, this one potentially harsh. I can see why it's been given over the road and wide in turn 22, past Yuki Sonoda. Leaves the track, gains an advantage, yes, slam dunk. But 10 seconds, is there precedent for that? There is precedent for a penalty for this. He's clearly off the track and the precedent is five seconds. Yeah, one we haven't yet seen, Lando Norris. This one will be investigated after the race and right. is being investigated right now. Right now at race control, this is going on. We're riding board with Lando Norris, coming down the pit lane just before the race starts. So car's coming out and oh, there's Yuki Sonoda. But Alex, you and I have spotted something here because this is something we didn't pick up on the live, but keep an eye on this mechanic here. He tells Sonoda to stop, and he doesn't give him the indication to come out on track and go and join the pit lane. Sonoda keeps driving despite the mechanic's hand signals to say, don't drive forwards. There's a McLaren coming your way. So it's definitely been a busy day for the stewards, Laura. Some decisions we, we get, some decisions we don't get, but there we go. It was, uh, it was a day full of penalties uh, over there in Saudi. Yeah, absolutely was. Stewards kept very busy indeed, except for that start for Lando Norris. How did you see that one, Jack? Which one? <laughs> Sorry, the Lando Norris jump start that wasn't, or maybe was. Yeah, you know, it's strange. Um, I didn't know there was much gray area in, in a jump start. Um, I can understand potentially the reasoning of you're stopping the car fully before continuing, but if the article says that you, you cannot be moving while the light goes out, then typically you'd think that that would be a penalty, but potentially overlooking it, maybe it wasn't the biggest thing going on at that point in time. And typically if they'd have waived it before, like they did with Sebastian Vettel in 2019, then potentially they wouldn't want to go against the previous um, outline that they'd made before. So I can see how that's maybe been waived. We're going to look at the Stroll crash now. Um, that was the moment that brought out the safety car, which then saw a flurry of early pit stops. This is it, Jack. Talk us through this. I mean, we know this track can bite if you get things millimetres wrong. Yeah, to be honest, when I saw that he'd gone into the wall at that point and not really the exit of 23 where it could look like if you lost the car, I knew he'd must have clipped the inside wall um, to go straight into the wall at that point. And it's so weird. We were speaking about it, uh, you know, earlier on in the weekend that the walls here on some parts of the track are like 50 cent coins. They kind of are not round like the guardrail into the chicane, into the swim pool chicane at Monaco or like we have at turn nine here. It steps out. So your initial reference of turning in, the wall might then jump out at your next side that you can see. And so to be millimeter close, it's just so difficult. And the contact, to be honest, isn't even that hard, but just at that angle, hitting the tire at that point, it's just caused the, the upright to break and go straight. A glancing blow and race over for Lance Stroll. That then brought out the safety car. As I say, a flurry of pit stops came in, a very busy pit lane. We're seeing some of the repercussions of that with the uh, penalties coming for unsafe releases as well. It also meant that Mercedes then offset their strategy. Lewis Hamilton staying out, George Russell pitting. Mercedes not able though, to just move up the field with Lewis Hamilton, staying out on that medium and then pitting onto the soft with tyre deck, not being as bad as anybody thought. How did you see Mercedes splitting that strategy and indeed their high speed seeming to be a bit of a thorn in their side? Yeah, strange on the high speed side of things. To be honest, you know, not being a part of it or in the loop too much, it's hard to say really why that is. However, the strategy call, splitting the two cars, uh, okay, you know, you avoid any difficulties that, that might come from on track you know, on track battles or whatever, but also it's free track position around a street, high speed street circuit, which has a very high chance of safety car. So having to actually force everyone onto a two stop would be very high once you're 30 laps deep on that hard tire. So it seemed like potentially a good call for Lando, for Lewis, um, even for Joe, who was sitting back in P10 for quite some time. But unfortunately that, that safety car when you want it sometimes just never seems to come. And, and they unfortunately had to make that late pit stop. And to be honest, for me, it was even looked like it was a little bit too early with you know the hopes to catch Beerman and get P P7 and P8 uh, 12 laps for me was just a bit too much of a stretch on the soft tire that always doesn't seem to work too well here and George Russell wasn't quite able to get up to turns with Fernando Alonso either let's hear it from him now so George P6 at the end of that one can I get your reflections on tonight's work uh, the reflection was just you know, seeing Fernando's backside the whole race which was uh, you know, I think I was between 1.1 and 1.6 
for 40 laps so that was a little bit frustrating when he went quicker I followed him when he went slower I followed him and I just couldn't get any closer so that was yeah long afternoon um, contrasting feelings compared to yesterday um, so yeah we need to understand where the car's at and what we need to improve from now two races into the season um, can I just get your thoughts on where Mercedes sit in the packing order and you know the work ahead the next couple of weeks before we head to Australia it's yeah, right now it's we're, we're fluctuating in performance quite a lot. Um, you know, we've seen potential in the car, um, but unfortunately these last two weekends we haven't really shown it when it's mattered. So we need to understand why that is and what we need to do. Um, but as we've seen, it is very close between ourselves, McLaren, Aston, and Ferrari. Um, we just need to be on top of it. Thanks, Thank George. Well, uh, we've suddenly been joined by a huge amount of media surrounding us, and that's because a man who has had a dream debut for Ferrari, a teenager scoring points in Formula One, has just joined us now. Ollie Behrman, take a bow. Does it get any better than that? I know you'll say yes, because you probably want to be on the podium, knowing your ambition. But how good was that? Yeah, it was a great race. Uh, I think we managed everything pretty well. Um, it was a bit unfortunate with the safety car. It didn't play into our hands, but... Um, yeah, that stint at the end on the hard, especially in the final laps when I had the guys on soft behind. Um, you know, it was flat out. It was like quality lap after quality lap, which was uh, really fun. How stressful was that, both mentally and also physically on the body as well on a circuit like this? I think when I, I saw them on the screen that they were pitting, so I knew they were coming out and I knew they would be on at least a medium or, or a soft, at least a faster tyre. Um, and I could see them on my dash coming quite quickly. But then the gap started to stabilise and from there I basically when they left the pits I was like okay I, I basically accepted that they were gonna come by at some point um, and then at some point they, they started to slow down and then eventually stabilized so um, it wasn't that stressful but the last three laps you know uh, took a bit of more margin to the walls let's say and it's Lando Norris and Lewis Hamilton chasing you down as well not not too shabby drivers are they yeah I think they were fighting which helped me out a little bit um, and I don't know if the soft was performing as they expected because um, yeah they, they weren't actually that quick at the end but yeah it, Jack, was, uh, it was interesting I think Coming into the weekend as an F2 driver, and then all of a sudden Saturday morning, F1 driver, not only for, I don't want to say a lower team, but for Ferrari, how was that sort of waking up and all of a sudden being like, okay, I'm not, not hopping into the Formula 2 machinery, not only hopping into an F1 car, I'm hopping into a Ferrari. <laughs> yeah, there was a lot of pressure, of course, especially from Fred. Um, you know, the walls are close here and he wanted me to bring back the car with four wheels still on it. <laughs> um, yeah, you saw my dad through the race. He's probably. been through the ring of your dad. My dad was more on screen than Max. <laughs> he's, felt, <laughs> <me yeah>. <laughs> he's felt every emotion of that. I think he's dad. more famous than me after this weekend. But <laughs> no, it was, um, it was tough, you know. I woke up on... I get mixed up with the days now. Oh, but it's not sure. Saturday, is it? Today's Wait, Saturday. 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 Friday. Friday morning, yeah. Friday. Whatever it is, but sprint race in F2. Um, got the call about a, two hours before FP that, that I was going to be jumping in the car, so I had to quickly run and get some stuff from F2 and, and head to F1. Um, luckily, I didn't really have a lot of time to kind of get nervous because, <laughs> you know, I was pretty much straight on it. But uh, See, no, it was everything. Cool. Felt good, yeah, jumping straight well, in. It doesn't feel good now, <laughs> to be honest. But, you know, those things you kind of have to adjust after you've driven in it. And I did the seat fit, it felt fine. But when you drive, especially on a track like this, I think I'll feel it in the morning. Yeah, physically, what is what is sore right now? What is painful? Talk us through it, because I'm a mere mortal. It's you better to say what this. isn't sore. OK, uh, <laughs> what isn't sore? <laughs> uh, nothing. <laughs> no, it was, it was tough. And I'm quite tall, so I struggle a little bit to, to fit perfectly in the car. Um, my back hurts a little bit, and especially my shoulders as well. Um, little pokes that you didn't feel during the seat fit. Exactly. Now, now it feels good, to... but then when you really get the G-force, that's when it starts to hurt. Um, I'm quite skinny, especially here, so it, it hurts. Um, but luckily, I don't have to do any more F1 at this stage, so uh, yeah, I'll, Not I'll be able to stage. recover. Not at this stage, but my goodness me, if you put yourself in a shot window, Oli Behrman, you were already being talked about in the driver market for 2025. I think you've put yourself in very good stead now. Julian Palmer saying he is sure you'll be in a seat for next year. What do you make of this? I mean, look at the immediate tension around you. So much pressure heaped on your young shoulders, just 18, but it's looking good, isn't it? Yeah, I hope he's right. Um, <laughs> I think I executed a good race today. Um, my only regret is that I was a bit inefficient trying to pass Nico uh, because honestly I was in a faster car and I should have overtook him more quickly but he used his experience well to, uh, to use the battery in the right places and took me a couple shots. The problem is when you drain the battery trying to overtake and you don't get it done, 
you have to wait a couple laps to recharge. Um, and yeah, that lost me a lot of time to the guys ahead. Um, after that, the gap stayed pretty similar, um, but yeah, lost a bit of time there. But overall, I was pretty happy. It's all part of the learning. Uh, and I'm sure you've learned an enormous amount. Thank you so, so much, Ollie, and congratulations on a brilliant debut. Pleasure Thanks. to see you here. Thank you, Ollie. Oh, and also your P10 in the driver standings in Formula One right it's now. It's better than F2. So you, you <laughs> F2 go. I'm last. So. Oh, no. I know, and you missed out on any points today after getting pole as yeah, well. Yeah, exactly. I, I'm, uh, I'm doing a 12-round championship in F2 rather than 14, so that, that's going to be tough. Let's see what we can do. Yeah, we'll see. Thank you. Best of luck in F2, and I'm Sorry. sure we'll see you again soon. Thank you. Very good to see you. Thank you to Ollie Behrman. Let's take a look then at those driver standings with the news that um, Oliver Behrman has stepped straight up in 2P number 10. Max Verstappen leading the way. Sergio Perez, P2. Charles Leclerc, P3. George Russell, P4. Oscar Piastri, P5. Carlos Sainz still up there despite that appendicitis. We wish him well. Unbelievably, he is here in the garage watching that race after having an operation yesterday. Fernando Alonso, some good points today for him. Lando Norris, Lewis Hamilton, and then Oliver Behrman rounding out the top 10. Pretty cool. Pretty cool, right? Pretty what, cool what are your experiences way. with Oli, uh, racing with him, against him, seeing him within within a paddock? Yeah, you know, I raced him last year in Formula Two. Um, was a, you know, I ended as the top rocky quick guy all year round. Um, you know, coming into this year's second year in F2, he was clearly the favourite, and they didn't have quite a strong first round. But then he's came in, put it on pole, thinking that he's going to redeem that. And it seems like he got even more redemption and got a shot in Formula One. So there's, you know, the highs of trying to potentially win a Formula Two championship, but getting your, your first uh, go in a Formula One car in Ferrari. So I'm sure he's not going to be thinking about that. And it's probably now tonight when he's looking forward to Melbourne. Now he'll be back in the F2 um, and switching those thoughts. But uh, yeah, he did a great job this weekend. And uh, regardless of where Formula Two sort, you know, finishes, he's, he's proven that he uh, that he's quick enough to, to race it. Yeah, that was something special today from Oli Bevan, for sure. Um, we're now going to throw to Ariana Bravo. She is roaming the paddock for us and has caught up with, I'm sure, a very proud Fred Vasseur. Joining me now is Fred Vasseur. Fred, solid day for Ferrari. How are you feeling after that one? Yeah, it was a good one, but uh, for Charles and for Oli, that uh, both did a good job. And it was important for us that we had a chaotic weekend, that uh, Thursday was very difficult for us uh, with Carlos and so that, uh, And when we call on the last minute only, that I was not uh, uh, so optimistic. At the end, he did a fantastic job, Charles also. And at the end, it's a good weekend for the team. Fantastic weekend. Oli really pushing there towards the end to keep that gap to Lando and Lewis. I mean, we heard on the radio the um, the engineers being, you know, just enjoy it. Don't don't take it too much. It's fine. But he really wanted this, didn't he? How impressed are you? Uh, but I think for uh, an English driver to have Norris and Hamilton yeah. behind you, it's a good one. It's the best one. <laughs> and to keep them behind. Yeah, no, no. But uh, I was a bit balanced on the uh, in the radio to between uh, push because it's uh, manageable and uh, avoid the mistake. But at the end, that uh, on the data, he didn't do a single mistake all the all the all the race. It means that we were quite relaxed, even if it's I don't know if it's possible when you have a rookie into the car. But we were quite relaxed, and he did very very well. He did indeed. And just a word on Charles's race as well. First podium of the season. Fantastic result for him. Yeah, good. But uh, we have to be focused on Red Bull. They are still a step ahead of mm -hmm. us. Uh, in quali, we are not that far away in the race. That it's a bit more difficult, but. Uh, I think we struggled a lot when we were at the beginning on the dirty air. As soon as we were able to be P3 and uh, to have clean air, that we, we are perhaps uh, four, five, ten slower, but it's, uh, it's still a gap. But we have to continue to push to, put, to be able to do a step, to put them under pressure, and it will be the best way to, to get Well, uh, very well done on a great result today, and eyes ahead to Australia. Thank you, Fred. Thank you. As ever, great to hear from Fred Vasseur, and he has got some talent in that Ferrari Driver Academy with Oli Behrman, and of course Charles Leclerc as well, with his first podium of the season. He said it was a bit of a boring race because he couldn't get up in front, but kept everyone else behind, but secured some valuable points for Ferrari. And of course, we wish Carlos Sainz all the best in his recovery. We'll see when he'll next be in a Formula One car, probably Australia. You can see, though, we have F1 Academy drivers, Chloe Chambers and Abby pulling with us. If you 
you haven't yet heard the news. Earlier on, Dorian Pan did win the F1 Academy race two, but she took another lap after the chequered flag at pace, not knowing she had already taken the chequered flag. She has uh, had a 20 second penalty for that. Abby Pulling finished the race less than two seconds behind her by my maths. That makes Abby Pulling the winner of race number two. And when I said, Abby, how are you doing? You croaked at me because you've <laughs> lost your voice you've been celebrating. I know it's not how a driver wants to win a race, and I know you want to do it on track at some point this season. But talk me through your reaction to this. Yeah, I mean, I ran straight back to, to Road Boat Sport over in the uh, support paddock, and I, I'm over the moon, obviously. Like I say, I don't want to win races like that, and I think we've put the pressure on all weekend, so... It's nice to, to get some, some look after last year, but um, yeah, I, I'm happy. It's the points at the end of the day. Absolutely. And Chloe, for you today, a P10, talk us through your race and where you feel some improvements can be made heading into the next rounds. Yeah, I mean, it's super great to be here racing um, on the F1 calendar with F1 Academy. Obviously, having the support of the Money Graham Haas F1 team is super special. And uh, yeah, I'm super glad to be racing here, just gaining experience as the season goes on. Um, you know, I think this weekend, I really kind of showed my pace. Um, obviously, a couple of unfortunate penalties in the second race bumped me down to P10. But I finished P4 yesterday, so I think that was a really good showing. And I'm looking forward to improving for the rest of the season. How good is it, how valuable the lessons learned from being involved in a Formula One team? For all three of you, we've got two in the Alpine Academy here. And of course, Chloe with the Haas team and a great showing from them today as well with a point in the Formula One Grand Prix. Yeah, it's so cool. Like, I mean, I watched the Formula One race from the Haas garage and that's something that I've never done before. And it's just invaluable to get that kind of experience, be able to see what happens during the race, hear all the information that the drivers get and just, you know, use it for my future as well. I do have a question um, to both you guys. And, uh, you know, Jeddah, unforgivable, uh, especially, you know, as well. You had a couple of days testing here, but still. That doesn't change the fact that it's an extremely difficult circuit. Um, and I don't think, correct me if I'm wrong, have you guys drove on a street circuit before? I, I'm very fortunate that I have. And yeah, yeah we, we both yeah, raced together. together. We <laughs> both have. But, okay, regardless, how, how did you find it in, you know, going forward the rest of the season? Would Saudi be one that you're looking forward to coming back to? I mean, this track, like you say, it's unforgivable. And I think I, it's just something that I love as a driver. You know, the tight, fast corners, it's just. It's just so much fun and it, it makes some great racing and I could drive this circuit for the rest of my life, honestly. Like every every lap you're finding a little bit more and a little bit more, but yeah, I don't know how you found it, but it's yeah, a good one. I mean, honestly, the track was really good for racing. There was a lot of action during the races. I mean, I even went back and watched the race one replay from yesterday and I was, I was entertained a lot, <laughs> um, even though I was in the race. But yeah, I mean, I could I could race on this track forever, like Abby said. I mean, you know, we should do like an endurance race here. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness me, it's, it terrifies me watching. So you guys are a different breed. But um, ladies, thank you both very, very much. Well done this weekend. Congratulations, our winner, P4 and a P10 for you, Chloe. A brilliant start as well. Um, and I can't wait to see how F1 Academy continues to thrive through this season. Thank you both so much. Let's take a look at the calendar for F1 Academy to see where we are off to next of course all seven rounds aligning with the f1 calendar so the next stop the united states miami third to the fifth of may and then we're heading to spain the netherlands that's in august singapore in september qatar in december and abu dhabi a double header to round out the year for our f1 academy Jack, you made me laugh there um because you answered producer joe out loud on the show rather than in your head? No, I just wanted to make it clear. I do have a question. I, I really yes, appreciate that. I just thought in my head, I'm like, I do have a question. Um, <laughs> and I wanted to make that clear. Producer Joe appreciated your exactly. sass as well. Um, <laughs> that you fired straight back. How much have you enjoyed F1 Academy and indeed working with athletes like Abby Pulling too? She's a fantastic driver. Yeah, it, it's really cool. Um, I think, you know, I was looking and sort of appreciating how actually good these girls are. Uh, you know, Dorian's done amazing things in the World Endurance Championship. Um, Maya Wake, who was behind Abby, been racing, you know, against an Italian F4 and doing really good results as well. So to see, you know, how tough it really is and see sometimes the gaps that they put over each other and, and you sort of, I sit back and appreciate and I go, no, that's, you know, She's done a really good lap, or really maximised that, which is really cool. And I just got really jealous because I saw that I think they'll be going to Miami. They are going to Miami, Which, yeah, yeah 
is um, is awesome. I really, really look forward to driving that circuit in the near future. Um, but yeah, they've got a great first two rounds to their F1 Academy, F1 Academy season. Yeah, for sure. And Singapore, I think Abby Pulling will certainly like that one. Just worth noting as well that it must be absolutely gutting for Dorian Pan after two pole positions, a win yesterday and the win today, almost a clean sweep of the whole weekend, and then just either a radio miscommunication or simply a head down, full focus, unaware of what was actually going on in terms of the laps and, and taking that second lap after the chequered flag. Yeah, as we were speaking with Nico earlier, it requires full focus around here and to be completely locked in. And clearly, she'd done that all weekend from FP to qualifying, like you said, race one. Um, you know, Abby had gotten close, very close over points of the weekend, but Dorian seemed just to have this place, you know, dialed in her and her Prima car. And yeah, potentially she was just so locked in that radio miscommunication, whatever it was, she didn't see that first checkered flag. And yeah, it's very unfortunate, not a way you want to lose a result, but unfortunately there's times like these where rules are put in place for a reason, but I'm sure it won't affect her season. I hope to very much, but very crucial points lost. Yeah, she did say um, on the team radio at the end of that race, why didn't you tell me? So I think some work to do within the team there to ascertain exactly what went on and what went wrong for Dorian Pan. But the win going to Abby Pulling in race two here this weekend. One apiece. I think we could see that fight going on each and every round this season. We're going to head to Julian now. I hear he's found some tyres. Julian. Okay, here we are here with the mechanic of uh, Mercedes. So basically what they are doing there, they are removing each wheel nut of the tires, basically, because you have to understand that in F1, the nuts is, is basically floating into the rim, basically. You can see, here is going to remove it. There we go. So they remove it, it's properly, it's not stuck, it's like floating on the rim, and that allows the mechanics, basically, during the pit stop to do a quicker pit stop. The problem of that, as we have seen with Haas today, if this nut is not aligned properly, basically on the, on the, on the hub, on the wheel hub, and it's slightly tilted, basically, what happens is that, hey, you have a very bad pit stop and you cannot remove the wheel. The only way to remove the wheel, this wheel nut, is as these guys are doing, basically, you have to put on this tray, using this big gun and then removing this nut. And you can see, if you come with me, I show you, I show you the wheel nut. You see all the Swiss nuts in F1, they are very, very precious. They are actually very, very expensive. You see, actually, it's quite hot still. So this is how, basically, we have to remove these wheel nuts in F1. Thank you so much, Julia. Uh, Jack and I just laughing. I've written down here, Alonso must be delighted to be in P5, and I'm not sure if we know he is or not. Um, I haven't heard his uh, post-race interview, but I, I'm figuring... You're hoping Astons, he's delighted? I think he must be. For the Astons to have kept the Mercedes behind, it's a much better weekend, a much better outlook for them than P9 and P10. So I think that was a great race for Alonso. I think it's a great race. Looking back to last year, he was obviously on the podium, um, but considering the situation that they've been in coming into this season, for sure, he's... Delighted with, with P5. <laughs> um, let's, let's hope that he is so that he doesn't come storming up and get us in trouble for that. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, he had a close, uh, few close moments brushing the wall in turn nine. Yes. Um, it didn't seem like it really made too much um, of an issue or luckily no damage. So that was, that was okay. But yeah, it's those moments where you really are trying to find those very small margins where Jetta bites and uh, luckily uh, he got away with it. Speaking of damage, someone's just smashed something over our shoulder there. Everyone is okay, though, no problems. Um, I am hearing from producer Joe, Alonso was, in fact, fairly happy. Fairly so happy. We'll, we'll so not that. really delighted, but um, he's fairly happy. It's Fernando Alonso, you know, world-class racer, yeah. world champion. He's not going to ever, I don't think, be delighted from P5, um, but for sure, nevertheless, inside and in that team briefing, they'll be happy to, to skewer 10 points this time. Definitely. Let's look at the top three then. Verstappen, Perez, Leclerc. I think a podium that many would have predicted and expected coming into this weekend. I think actually Julianne in our pre-race show predicted this exactly. What do you make of the performance of Charles Leclerc? He was saying post-race that he found that quite boring because he was, I think, in a world of his own, not quite up to the Red Bulls, but had kept the others at bay behind. Yeah, I think a similar situation, like we were saying before with Nico, sort of being in your own race, um, you know, Max faces it 24 rounds a year. Um, but uh, yeah, probably something that 
they weren't entirely expecting. I think Charles would have hoped that he could maybe challenge Checo a little bit more. And even on lap two of the Grand Prix, it seemed like Charles was actually staying almost around that one second gap to Max, which usually he's two to three seconds down the road by that point. And I saw one green sector a few tenths quicker than Max, but Max immediately rebounded and, and sort of set off into the distance. And a lap later, Checo was past him. So, uh, yeah, you know, he's going to be happy with the first podium, but I don't think he'd be so happy just to wear that how far away Red Bull are and uh, at this point in time but you know it's round two so much more to come um, but definitely not unpredictable podium. Yeah Charles Leclerc with the fastest lap as well so some hope for Ferrari there is pace in that car but still the gap to Red Bull can goodness me this paddock is being torn apart around us the gap to Red Bull yet to be reached uh, let's get to the schedule before our desk is taken away. Here we go then. It's Australia next up. I bet Jack Doohan's very excited about that one. We will have our weekend warm at 7 p.m. track time. Well, on the Friday, yes, we're back to a normal schedule. We'll all understand what day it is now. Friday, we will have FP1 at 12.15. That's when we're on air building up to our FP1 show. FP2 will begin our coverage at 3.45 p.m. and FP2. P3 on the Saturday. Again, 15 minute build up ahead of a 12.30 third hour of running. Qualifying, we have our pre quali show. That will be at 3.30 p.m. on Saturday ahead of 4 p.m. qualifying. And then the race, we're back to daytime racing now, 2 p.m. on Sunday, the 24th of March, down under. I can't wait to head back to Melbourne. I think I was in an absolute day's dizziness of jet lag last time I went. So I'm looking forward to hopefully emerging from a bit of a cloud and enjoying a bit more of it. Uh, how much are you looking forward to getting out there and seeing the track once again, getting home? Yeah, I'm really, really looking forward to it. I got to experience it myself last year in F2. And to be honest, it's apart from being home race biased, you know, I really did enjoy it. It was, uh, you know, another street circuit, also a place that has very big consequences. Of course, there is runoff. Uh, however, the curbs are brutal. There's AstroTurf right after it, and the consequences are big. We have seen some some big crashes in around Albert Park, and the circuit definitely is not forgiving. Um, but uh, nevertheless, it is home for me as well. I get to go back for a week uh, before the Grand Prix, which is amazing. And then heading down to, to Melbourne on the Tuesday, a great week of, of media events and uh, to experience another round three with Alpine. Will anyone close the gap to Red Bull in Australia, do you think? It's at the moment, you know, for sure, you'd want to be hopeful. Um, maybe small steps. Uh, Ferrari potentially were slightly closer to Checo in Bahrain, uh, not so much to Max, um, but you never know what's coming and, and what they might be bringing to Australia. We have our, our first time where teams will be heading back completely to the factories, a reset, um, maybe a fresh new bit of ideas uh, before Melbourne where hopefully they can do something, try to get between the two and alter the strategies and maybe bring in something special to maybe even get a double Ferrari podium. Oh, we'll see. Thank you so much, Jack, for all of your insight on this post race show. It's been a busy one. We've had a plenty of drivers on. Thanks to Ariana Bravo, to Mike Seymour as well, um, asking questions in the media pen to each of our 20 drivers. So Max Verstappen takes his ninth win in a row, his second of the season, and another Red Bull 1-2 with Charles Leclerc rounding out the podium here at the Jeddah Corniche circuit for the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix. We will see you all in a few days down under in Melbourne for the Australian Grand Prix. Thank you for watching. Bye for now. Welcome to Melbourne. My home race. It's good to be back.